what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 wwe wrestlers who had a more brutal alternate finisher now this should be a very interesting video because sometimes alternate finishers you would think should probably be the main finisher but we're gonna check out some of these uh instances where wrestlers alternate finishers were better than the, the their main finisher or came off as more devastating should be a very interesting one appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel let's get right into this bad boy man evolution is one of the key parts in keeping a wrestler popular and relevant evolution can take many forms it can take the form of a new gimmick or persona or it can be the introduction of a brand new finishing move this is always a risky decision to make as a new finishing move has to stand out when contrasted against the wrestler's prior finishing move for sure the move should always make logical sense to the gimmick of the respective wrestler sometimes the new finishing move is positively received by fans uh -huh. and that wrestler will implement the finisher into their arsenal for the remainder of their career however it's also often the case that fans are left confused by the finishing move and the move is quickly abandoned and the wrestler hopes that fans erase it from their memories Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 notable times a wrestler introduced a new finisher. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Alright, let's get right into this one. Should be a good one. Number 10, Randy Orton, the punk kick. Oh, the Randy Orton had no yeah, recent to debut. Bro, the punk kick is, is just classic. And it fit his theme bro the voices in his head he was deranged and it's effective because when you really think about it you kick someone in the head they're done cte all over the place and the rko is a very dope uh you know finisher but that punt kick Oh, that shit was so good, man. A new finishing move back in 2007. Oh, so Orton's good. Orton's finishing move, the RKO, is without a doubt one of the most famous finishing moves ever. But Orton and WWE decided to take the risk by expanding Orton's repertoire. During his vastly underrated feud with Shawn Michaels, Orton introduced the punk kick. Oh my this god, so Orton good. people in the skull, and it was presented as one of the most devastating and sinister moves in WWE at the time. According to Orton, during an interview with TalkSport, it was a legendary Arn Anderson who came up with the idea. The punk kick was Arn Anderson's idea. I believe it was in 2007, and I was working with the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels, and I believe he was the first guy that I kicked in the head. Uh -huh. Back then, it was a different time, and I kicked a lot of people in the head. I talk about taking care of your opponent and I talk about how your number one priority should be making sure that you physically have your opponent's back above even having the best match on the card. It should be about taking care of each other as a first priority. So with that punk kick, it was hard. It was hard because I've got to make this thing look good, but uh -huh. it's kind of hard to work for lack of a better term. A kick to the head, something that devastating. Yeah. And due to a strong presentation, Orton was able to get the move over, and whenever Orton has hit the move in recent years, it's always received a significant ovation from the audience. Yeah, because it's, uh, it was protected, and it looks devastating. Someone running full speed and kicking you in the head like a damn soccer ball you do that to someone in real life, you're going to jail and they're going to definitely uh, be in a hospital. So it just worked in. Once again, it fit his deranged theme. Like he wasn't using his finisher. He was trying to legit put you on the shelf. Love the punt kick. Number nine, Batista, Batista bite. In 2010, Not sure if I remember this Batista's one. Batista's final few weeks in the company, he decided to introduce a new submission based finishing move. The reason for the introduction of the move was to give Batista a possible move to defeat his arch rival John Cena, and the move uh... in question was known as the Batista Bite. Despite the move being short lived, it looked fantastic, as it was in essence a scissored armbar crossface, and some fans compared it to the notable submission move, The Rings of Saturn. Fans will always remember the Batista Bomb as Batista's primary mm -hmm. finishing move. Yet his submission-based move was certainly one that Damn. had the ability to get over and connect with the audience. Bro, yeah, Mark Henry slump. Damn. <laughs> Number eight, Kevin Owens, the stunner. Whenever a wrestler reuses yeah. an iconic finisher, their finisher is always going to be... I had to get used to it. I, I definitely did have to get used to him using the stunner. I'm okay with it because, I mean, I think we all... Kevin Owens, is so, he's, he's great. He's fantastic. But I, had, I really did have to get used to it initially. Compared to the original version of the move, when Kevin Owens decided to use the stunner as a finishing move, it took a considerable amount of time for fans to react positively yeah. because the stunner was synonymous with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And even John Cena had a tough time in getting his variation yeah. of the move over. 
While speaking to Inside the Ropes, Owens would discuss why he decided to adopt the move and he even revealed that he asked Austin permission before he started incorporating the move into his arsenal. So mm -hmm. I tried to think of something new that nobody was doing and then it occurred to me that nobody was really doing the stunner. And then, you know, I was looking at the landscape of things and everybody does a super kick mm -hmm. and the super kick was Shawn Michaels' finishing move. Nobody ever used it as good as him, but yeah. nobody was using the stunner. And to me, those are pretty much two of the most iconic finishes of all time. So I'm like, well, the super kick's obviously kind of spoken for. The stunner is my favorite move of all time. It's yeah. probably a lot of Love people's it. favorite move of all time. I know the guy who used to do it. I'm going to go and ask him. So I did. He was very happy to tell me I could use it. Give me his blessing. He said, I don't know why nobody came to me sooner about it. Yeah, which is crazy. Point on, it was just finding the right time to do it. And I think it's because just out of respect, because they know it's not as soon as you do it, it's not going to it's going to take fans time to really buy into it. The only reason why I work for Kevin Owens, because Kevin Owens is he's more or less liked by the fan base. And it, it took some time. And it's one of those things where he was able to really expound upon it when he ended up uh, talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin and they had their feud going into WrestleMania that year. But it took time for fans to actually be like, you know what, I'm okay with it. And now fans are okay with him doing it, but it took time. Anybody else that's not Kevin Owens or, you know, not at that level of, of Kevin Owens in the sense of, being at the top of the car, Kevin Owens is mostly usually at that upper tier range uh, in WWE and has been for a while. I don't, I don't think it even works even with them. Like it, it's, it's DOA on arrival type situation. Once I started using it on television, it just took off from there. And it's funny because it's been like a conflicting point for some people. You know, like I also have some people saying it's awesome that you use it. Number seven, Bobby Lashley, Hurt Lock. Uh -huh. The majority of WWE fans associate the full Nelson submission with Chris Masters. Yeah. During the Ruthless Aggression era, Masters used the move and he labeled it as the Master, Master Lock. Lock yeah. Masters managed to get the move over to such a degree that WWE began presenting the Master Lock challenge on Raw. Uh -huh. Interestingly, the man who eventually broke the hold, that being Bobby Lashley, yep. would be the one to reuse the move. As during Lashley's second run in WWE, he began to use the move as a secondary finishing move. Lashley, similarly to Masters, got the move over and he yeah. won his first ever like WWE title with a submission. I like it when he move, uses that move. the Hurt Lock in 2021. Number six, Bray Wyatt, the Mandible Claw. Mm. The Mandible Rest Claw is brave. one of the most underappreciated finishes around. The move was introduced by Mick Foley in WWE and it saw Foley place his middle and ring finger into his opponent's mouth and press down on the bottom tissue. In theory, the pain of the hole should be so severe that the opponent should pass out. It was welcome when Bray Wyatt's The Fiend character decided to use the move as it was about time that the move was introduced to a new generation. It was a perfect move for The Fiend to use and in a selfless segment, Foley would even allow The Fiend to deliver the move to him in a segment on Raw. It's common for wrestlers to be extremely was, bitter and resentful dope. if wrestlers use their established move, yet this wasn't the case with Foley. Simply put, Foley had nothing but love for The Fiend using his trademark move. Which worked. It worked with his character. It was cool. Foley... One thing about Mick Foley, which we, once again, we always got to give credit to. He is all about putting people over, bro. However he can, he will do what he can to put you over. Even if that means letting you use his iconic move to get you over. I'm all for it, bro. Number five, Daniel Bryan, running knee. Mm. When Daniel Bryan ascended to become one of the most popular stars in WWE, it made sense for Bryan to introduce a new finishing move. His prior move was known as the Yes, yes Lock. Love the Yes with Lock. Most top wrestlers, they usually have a secondary move to use when WWE don't want to go with a submission based finish for a match. Mm -hmm. Brian introduced the running knee move in the summer of 2013, and he couldn't have picked a better match. Such to a debut good move. move, too. Brian was wrestling John Cena at SummerSlam, and he used the new move to defeat yep. WWE's Bop. franchise Ooh, guy and win the WWE so title. Good. Love this that move. instantly put the move over, as he had pinned Cena, and from that point onwards, mm -hmm. the fans accepted the move as credible and yep. legitimate. Yeah. Number four. Love that running knee is so good. He builds up for it. Oh, it's so good. So good. <sighs> so good. <laughs> I, I wish he was. Ain't gonna lie to you. I do kind of wish he was in WWE still. McIntyre, Claymore. When Drew McIntyre returned to WWE in 2017, he introduced a new finisher, which was known Claymore's as the Claymore. really good, it's too. That McIntyre did use a move in his prior run on a few occasions, yet it was never marketed or labeled as a finishing move. Mm -mm. McIntyre had previously used the future Shock DDT, but uh -huh. this was the new move that allowed McIntyre to win matches in an intense yet quick manner. Yeah. McIntyre's had significant Bow. success with the move, having defeated names such as Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, and Goldberg. 
Number three, The Undertaker this is a good one too. TCB. The Undertaker's Hell's Gate finishing move isn't the only submission move that The Undertaker incorporated into one of his many incarnations. During the Ruthless Aggression era, The Undertaker began to use an alternative move as his finisher, and it was known as the Taking Care of Business. The move would often be sure abbreviated as simply TCB, and it saw the dead man perform a dragon sleeper on his opponent. Damn! The move did look painful. It didn't warrant the crowd response that WWE yeah. or The Undertaker were looking for. The move was quickly retired and the dead man would only use it on rare occasions, most notably at WrestleMania 21. I forgot he did this. I mean, it makes sense. It, it didn't really get over, so they kind of buried it. Like, ah, we'll have you do the other stuff you've been doing. But when he collided with the legend killer Randy Orton. Number two, Chris Jericho, Codebreaker. Mm. When Y2J Chris Jericho returned to WWE in 2007, he once again showed the world why he was the undisputed king of evolution. Jericho returned with a new look and a brand new finishing move, and he would keep the iconic walls of Jericho, but he would also introduce the Codebreaker. Mm -hmm. The Codebreaker is a double knee face breaker, and at first it was apparent that the fans were struggling to connect with the move. However, over time, it became a staple of Jericho's character, and he still uses the move 15 years on from his initial debut. But this isn't the first time that Jericho introduced a new finisher, as in 2001 he introduced the Breakdown. This was a version of the Miz's skull crushing oh. finale, and due to the move failing to make any type of statement, the move was eventually retired. That's crazy, but it works with with the Miz. That's it's crazy how some moves work with some wrestlers, and uh, it works better with others. And number one, Roman Reigns guillotine choke. Yeah, this was good. Twenty twenty was a year in which yeah. WWE finally pulled a trigger on turning Roman yes, Reigns heel. Yes, this was so he good. He would debut his tribal chief persona, and he would be joined by Paul Heyman in what would become a run that would receive widespread praise as well as critical and financial success for WWE. As part of the new heel character, Reigns decided to introduce a new submission move. Love it. It was a deadly guillotine choke. Love it. It was the best possible move for Reigns, and due to the move looking incredibly legitimate, fans instantly took it seriously. Reigns had great success with the move, having choked out the likes of Braun Strowman and Daniel Bryan. And mm -hmm. although Reigns still prefers to use the spear as his primary finishing move, the guillotine choke is always waiting to make a sudden reappearance. But there you have it, folks. Ten no score and times. It, it fits his character. It fits how he had changed. Because, yeah, you can have him go out there and still do a spear as a heel. But you saw once he applied it. I remember when he applied it first. And I was like, oh, shit. He's, just, he's doing different moves. And he's choking him out. And he has this aggressiveness. He's talking trash while he's doing it. Just putting somebody to sleep. And then they fade off. It's perfect because it... It matched his intensity. It matched the change in his character. Now he's not here to hit you with a spear and and, and end the match. No, he's he's willing to choke you out and hold it too. I love that. Love that. And you can do that to set up a little hype moment for the babyface to try to overcome the guillotine. Like right? it's 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 a good addition to his uh, move set. A lot of these were actually great for the the particular character that they were trying to you know elevate different moves with or add more moves with because it worked with the wrestler's character at that time so comment down below let me know y'all favorite finisher of all time let me know down below doesn't matter from which company which wrestler let me know your favorite finisher of all time but i appreciate all the love and support Guys, shout on channel, road to 150k, and I'm still the youngest speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in me. See y'all next one. Peace.